the rhythm of work and rest is, is a beautiful part of what God has created us to do. But Jesus, you know, he gives us this invitation in scripture and he says, come to me, those who are weary, and let me give you rest. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. Come to me and find rest for your souls. And I read those words and it's, it's just like so, so refreshing <laughs> to remind myself that, that Jesus, he isn't calling us to come and say, work harder, work harder, do more, do more. And yeah, there are things that we have to do and there are times we have to work hard, but his ultimate invitation is come to me and experience my rest. Hey friends, welcome back to the Naked Marriage Podcast. All good things must come to an end and our summer quickie season is drawing to a close. That's right. Today's the last one. That doesn't mean that quickies can't continue to be a part of your life in other ways. (laughs) (laughs) You love it, don't you? (laughs) (laughs) But here on the podcast, you know, uh, you'll have to wait till next summer to get a podcast version of quickies. But we've had so fun this summer. I hope you have too. I hope you've caught lots of sun. I hope you've had family time. Maybe you've gotten a chance to travel a bit. Whatever you've done, I hope it's been great. We're excited about this season wrapping up as fun as it's been because this fall we've got amazing things happening at XO. We've got some wonderful events happening. You can go to xomarriage.com, get a full list of where we're going to be traveling this fall. We would love to see you at one of those events. And here on the Naked Marriage Podcast, we've got um, big big things happening too. So right. stay tuned next week. Uh, for uh, for some uh, kind of a kickoff of a new season. But we're going to finish strong today doing an episode about dealing with stressful seasons in your marriage. Mm-hmm. And it's just timely for us. Timely, yes. Because, uh, you know, we've come out of kind of an intense travel season. Uh, there's been a lot going on with the kids, a lot going on uh, both work, home. Ashley's in a school program for biblical counseling and like all kinds of things mostly good things, but have happened all at once at a pace that's been a little bit unsustainable and has created some stress. And so this is a fresh topic for us. It is to the point where we were just literally talking this morning, driving in about how Dave is going through some digestive issues because of the stress. (laughs) Yeah, a combination of... Which in our marriage, I mean, we've we've been married almost 21 years, actually 21 years by the time they're listening to this, already been yeah, married 21, 21 years. So, you know, we 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 kind of know some of our um, telltale signs that there's stress, right? And for Dave in particular, when he's feeling under stress, it really affects your, your digestive system. I have a very and, sensitive um, <laughs> system, apparently. <laughs> I think a lot of people can relate to that. And I mean, years ago, when we were in a stressful season, probably like eight years ago, he, he was convinced that there was like something really wrong. You didn't tell me yet because you didn't want to like well, alert I, me. Yeah. Cause my, when, when I get under stress, like I feel, it, it feels like there are knots in my stomach. Like yeah. it just starts to feel that way. And, and during a very stressful season, this was probably, I don't know, six or seven years ago. Like, yeah. Somewhere around there. Maybe soon. I don't know. My timelines are all me- messed up, but it was a while back and it was so intense, like I my digestion was all messed up and I was trying to take in acids all the time. And I felt like like there was like a growth in my stomach. Like yeah. they were gonna put a scope in my stomach and find some massive tumor. That's what it felt like. And mm-hmm. I actually did have an endoscopy where they did put a scope in my stomach and they're like, Yeah, nothing there. I think this is all just kind of like stress related indigestion. And so stress can have physical manifestations and it's something I've had to work on. Yeah. And I've, you know, had other kind of medical related issues that have helped with that too. Once I got like the thyroid thing diagnosed and other things that we've talked about, I won't belabor those points, but stress can so impact your health and your marriage if you don't deal with it in a healthy way. And and I'm saying this as a guy that hasn't got it all figured out, but I've, I've come through some stressful seasons and where my own health was negatively impacted by the way that I was responding and learned from that. And now, like, we're coming out of a kind of another stressful season, not as intense, I don't believe, as it's been in the past. You know, no no crisis. There's not a crisis we face. It's just been busyness. It's just been regular life stuff. But a whole lot of it, the pace of it happening, you know, all all at at once. once. A lot at once is what it's been. And so we're trying to learn from that. We're trying to learn to um, let go of some things. Because I used to just try to say yes to everything and then figure out how to do it later. And I would overcommit. And now I'm realizing, like, I just can't. Like, I, I'm, I'm becoming more aware of my limitations in a positive way. Yeah. Where I, it's okay to say no to things, even if it disappoints people, because I've got to find a sustainable pace for my health, for my faith, for the, the, the joy in our home to, 
to to be protected and of course for our marriage to be protected. Absolutely. And I remember years ago when you were going through that, there was a book out by Lisa Turker. She's one of my favorite authors and it was called The Best Yes or Your Best Yes. I can't remember. If you Google Best Yes, you'll see it. And I read that because I just felt like both of us needed that message. And it's so good because it's saying how, you know, you can say yes to a lot of things, but is it really the best yes? Is it the thing that's that's really where your time needs to be going and where your attention and efforts need to be going? Because, you know, a lot of times we have to say no to a lot of otherwise good things. It's not that they're bad things. I think it's easy to say no to bad things sometimes. Yeah. But most of the time maybe. But it's it's hard to say no to things that feel like, well, this is a good thing, a good opportunity, something that, you know, I want to do. And sometimes we just we really need to pray about that and shelf that and say, like, not now. It's not like a a firm no, but it's a not now. And so I learned a lot from that book and I highly encourage you if if you have a hard time saying no, which often can cause more stress than than, you know, than we need in our life. I mean, some stress we we can't control it coming into our life. It's just life circumstances, but there's a lot that we can control. And that's the kind of conversations we've been having is like, you know, where in, in this next busy season of of travel and different things, how can we make this a little less stressful or maybe a lot less stressful? And and what are things within our power to do to add more peace into our life and to have healthier rhythms, you know? And um, so we really, we, we have those conversations quite a bit. And that's really kind of the point I'm trying to make here is as a married couple, it takes both of you sitting down and saying, where do we need to monitor and adjust? And you guys, if you listen to this podcast for any length of time, you've heard us say those, those phrases a lot. We did not come up with that. We actually heard a couple at an event we were doing, a couple was sharing and they used that phrase. And I was like, that's, that's so perfect. Oh, yeah. We need to monitor and adjust. And this is something that is going to be a regular practice throughout marriage, because unfortunately guys, we never arrive in marriage. We never just have one epiphany and like, boom, we just know what we're doing all the time. It's just not how God made it. We live in a world that's changing all the time. We're changing all the time. There's there's circumstances that that come in our life that we never saw, you know, coming that we didn't necessarily bring on that are stressful and and we have to cope. We have to find a way to deal with it. And so for us, it takes really having that open line of communication and saying like what's working, what's not. What do we need to monitor and adjust in our calendar, in our health? Like I know for me personally, I feel like uh, right before the pandemic, we wrote our book Naked and Healthy and we were just flying high, feeling healthy. And then the pandemic hit. And like a lot of people, we were like, I mean, I'm I, yeah, eat I some got pretzels and I, like I got chill. pretty chubby. <laughs> and then, and so then like I got chubby and then we had to like go on a <laughs> speaking to speak tour about, naked, about and naked and healthy with visible love handles. And so I felt like a hypocrite, but at the same time, I didn't want to stop eating. It's real life though. So, I mean, this is real life. And so I'm like, man, we need to rain, you know, rain it in like, Let's put those principles into practice. And so for me personally, it's like, I need to do those things that I know are going to, not only are good for me, but make me feel better. And that's like, you know, drinking more water and making sure I'm getting adequate sleep, making sure we're getting exercise, you know, making sure those walks that we talk about all the time are happening regularly. And, and that we're, we're doing the things that we know are going to make us feel better physically, but also, you know, it's all connected. We, when we feel better physically, it helps our mental health too. I mean, you know, a lot of times when you go to see a counselor, one of the things they will tell you to do is to, to have some form of exercise because that, is actually going to help your mental health as well because yeah. it may, you get your endorphins going and it helps you feel better. And so, you know, we've, we have to tell ourselves these things too. I mean, we may write books about this stuff and we do know a lot, but that doesn't necessarily mean that we always do it the right way because no, we, we gotta, we, we gotta remind ourselves. Mistakes often. That's right. So like, yeah, we, we learn, we'll learn from any, any sort. We learn from the Bible first and foremost, because that's always true. Uh, but we, we learn from life experience and a lot of our life experience has been the failures we've learned from. That's right. And then we learn from other people. You know, we're always trying to ask people, what's working in your life? What are you learning? And we try yeah. to apply that and and then share it with you guys. Anything positive we learn, we just try to turn around and share it, share it with you guys. So the stress thing, though, is something that we're still learning. And it's it's one of these areas, usually in marriage, one of you is better at, than the other at, at certain things. You, you both got your strengths. Ashley is way better at most things, really. But that's not Certain, true. It's, well, it kind of is, but mm -mm. you're just you're just so good. You're not as good at taking a compliment. That's what you're not as good at. <laughs> you're so, silly. You no, know, but she's great at um at at lots of things, including she's much better than me at managing stress. Like stress, like I, I just I tend to know. internalize it, and then um I'll, I'll I'll just get frustrated, and then I'll get angry, um and have a shorter fuse, and then. 
Well, I think with Dave, kind of a pattern that we've seen that we're, again, we're both works in progress here and we try to hold each other accountable. But a theme with Dave is he is such a, he's a prolific writer. He's a prolific everything. Like he gets stuff done. Like if no one could ever say you're lazy, no one could ever say that guy doesn't get stuff done. Because if you send this him an email, he's going to email you back not only within the hour, probably within 15 minutes, if he has his phone right. on him. Right now, our kids have his phone, so that's why he can't day, respond. It won't happen, but <laughs> but um, anyway, you know, he's he's just one that gets it done. And so when he feels stress come on, regardless of what the cause of the stress is, you're a doer. You feel like I must do more to relieve stress. But then what happens is you, you end up stressed. you get more stress because you get exhausted. Yeah. And then when you're exhausted, like all of us, you're not at your best. You know. And he doesn't take a nap. I've tried to convince him, you guys, I feel like naps are holy. We know Jesus napped at least once. And <laughs> Well, the problem you know, is like my rhythm. It's not your rhythm. You gotta find your rhythm. And my rhythm is like, I like to go to bed early. I like to get up early. But if during the middle of the day, it's my peak energy. And, and I can't nap because like that's, even if I'm stressed, even if I feel weary, I have too much energy in the middle of the day to right. take a nap. So now going to bed early helps me, but you gotta find that rhythm that works for you. And I have to remind myself too, I think sometimes in our mind as Christians even, we have this false sense of who God is, what he's doing, and we, we've got this picture of God up there saying like, just work harder, do more, work harder, do more. And yeah, he's called us to be productive and to, and to work. work. The rhythm of work and rest is, is a beautiful part of what God has created us to do. But Jesus, you know, he gives us this invitation in scripture and he says, come to me, those who are weary, and let me give you rest. My yoke is easy, my burden is light. Come to me and find rest for your souls. And I read those words and it's it's just like so so refreshing <laughs> to remind myself that that Jesus, he isn't calling us to come and say, work harder, work harder, do more, do more. And yeah, there are things that we have to do and there are times we have to work hard, but his ultimate invitation is come to me and experience my rest. Come mm -hmm. to me and experience my rest. Because he's really the one who's done all the work. His last words from the cross were, it is finished, not now go work harder, do more. It's, <laughs> it is finished, like I've done it, I've accomplished it. I did it for you. I did something you never could have done on your own and receive that gift and walk in the reality of that gift of grace that I gave my life to give to you. And, uh, and then he conquered death and rose again to show us the new life that, that he makes possible. And when we remind ourselves of who we are in him, it should bring healing and freedom to our souls. It should energize us. And so when I'm getting really stressed, sometimes sometimes what I'll have to do is to just remind myself of his promises and his truths. And I'll have to put down all the, the things I'm trying to do to be productive because work can become an idol. Like it can become something where we find our identity in what we're doing. Like my identity is I'm productive. My identity is I'm good at this. And, and sometimes we have to lay all that down to say, no, my identity is that, that I'm a child of God. My identity is that Jesus loves me yeah. and I... I need to just rest in that, um, that I'm already loved and I can't earn my way into more love. Like I'm already loved and I just need to rest in that and be thankful in that. Right. And and it's something that I've got to remind myself of a lot because my tendency is to just, I, I'm feeling stressed, so I'm, I've got to do more, I've got to do more. And really it's, it's the opposite is what I usually need in those moments. I need to let go of all the stuff I'm doing and really embrace rest and and the, the peace that comes from rest. And you've been doing a great job of of trying to embrace that more because I know it goes against like what you want to do and to to break cycles that aren't serving you well. It, it it doesn't feel right at first, you know. But I know that Dave, I mean Dave is always one every morning. He goes in our front room and he reads the Bible and and I mean every single morning. I don't think you ever miss a morning. And so you're you're starting your day with God's word and that's so good. And I know you're praying too. And um and then he's taken it a step further, especially when he was really getting stressed. And he shared this with you guys, you know, one of our our sponsors, Faithful Counseling, Dave was like, "You know, I, I don't feel like I'm managing my stress well. I need to talk to a professional and so he did it he he used faithful counseling had a great counselor really talk through some things with yeah. you and you felt like it really helped and so a lot of times we just need to reach out for professional help and um you know we talk about for for marriage reach out to our exo mediators by going to exomarriage.com help they're amazing but for individual counseling go to getfaithful.com and you can have amazing virtual it's counseling slash with a, naked marriage oh i'm sorry slash naked yeah, marriage so, yes that's right and you can that's like our our page with faithful counseling and we and recommend have some it. kind of deal with that as well well. So like Ashley said, you know, it's something I did. Anything we recommend to you guys is something
something we believe in and something that we're we're doing ourselves almost every time. Absolutely. You know, whether it's yeah. a, you know, even even if it's like advertising a food product or something, it's like, so we actually like the taste of this. But yeah. with the counseling thing, which is much more important, something that we believe in. We just believe in counseling. Absolutely. We believe in in what our mediators do here at EXO, like Ashley just said. So you don't have to figure it all out on your own is is something that can help relieve stress. Like yes. you, there are resources and people and professionals available that can help you with this. And I'm so thankful for that. I am too. And I want to say this too. I know if you're, if you're a, a kind of person who feels guilty about allowing yourself to have rest or relaxation, and I'm talking about you, Dave, <laughs> he really, he's such a hard worker that he, he, you do for many years, you felt guilty for, for accepting invitations to go on guys trips or for accept, you know, going away to have a little moment. But yeah. let me say this summer, he has been asked to go on a guy's trip for how many years, like four years or something with these, these guys that you met in Israel. Okay. Yeah. I'm yeah. And so sharing I, about I this. finally said, okay, I'll go. He I'm gonna, finally said, so I'm, I'm going to go, go fishing yes. and I'm going to go stand in a river and, uh, and learn how to in fly Montana. Fish for a couple days. So yes, but I plan. had to like practically beg him to go because I'm like, I just know what good it's going to do for him. And and the other years, you know, it just sometimes the timing wasn't right. right. Yeah, there was but I know I think that there's a lot of people. And I mean, I've had moments like this, too, where I've been like, no, I, I, I can't go to that. And you've been such I mean, an advocate for me. And you've said, sweetie, this would be so good for you. Go take two days and go to that women's conference or go on that girl's beach trip for two days. And I'm just so grateful that you do that because I know it takes a lot on the person staying home with the kids and staying home holding yeah. down the fort. It can be a lot on them. But I think it's so good when it's in balance. Let me make sure that's very clear. When it's in balance, this isn't happening like all the time and taking away from your family. When it's like, you know, once or twice a year, you get to go and be refreshed and be poured into. I feel like that's a healthy rhythm. And so I'm just so glad that Dave is doing this. And I know it's going to be so good for you and therapeutic. And, you know, because you're going to be with, with, uh, friends, you know, Christian friends where you can pour into each other, but also you're learning something new. There's something really cool about being in nature and learning something new. And so I'm really excited to, to see, you know, what this does just to relieve stress for you. So, it, you know, for you, for you watching and listening, think about that. Like, what are some things maybe that you've thought about, but you've always said no, because there's, you know, you, there's just been some kind of excuse and maybe it's been a legitimate excuse, but maybe it's been that you just never want to even consider it. I would just say like, look at your calendar and say, maybe this year could be the year that we, that we do that, that we say, you know, let's go somewhere together. Maybe it's you going together. That'd be amazing for a couple days, get away, pray together, do a vision retreat. Like we talk about all the time. You can actually go to exomarriage.com and look up vision retreat and you can get a guidebook to help you walk through that. We actually did, we recorded uh, some video sessions at exo now that if you want those to walk you through it as well, but uh, you can do that together as a couple. And that's going to breathe life into your marriage and to each other, you know, individually, but also also think about like, is, is there some kind of spiritual retreat, like a Christian retreat that you can go to that's a couple days. And I'm telling you, those, those are so life-giving, aren't they, sweetie? I mean, yeah. it's, we don't no, get to do that every year. Conferences through the years have, have really changed, changed our lives. And oh, so yes. and speaking of conferences, oh, we yes. wrap up the, the quickies. That's right. Um, the EXO conferences are second to none in terms of just getting away with your spouse and recharging. And we've got some great ones coming up this fall. Uh, we're going to be, yeah, we're going to be in different cities in different parts of the All country. Over. So go to xomarriage.com and you can get the full line. If you go, if you want to just specifically look at conferences, go to xomarriage.com slash conferences and you can see, see the full line up there. And we want to... And they're amazing. They are so fun, guys. They yes. are so fun. I mean, we learn a lot. We laugh a lot and we leave recharged uh, and it's it's we want the same for you. So come and check that out. And uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in with us this summer. Come back uh, next week for the fall series kickoff. And also come back this Wednesday for a Hump Day Q&A episode. Hump Day Q&A. We love it. Shout out to Eric, our producer, who's making the magic happen in here. And yes. shout out to special guests in the studio today, Nancy, from Nancy's our customer us. service Woo-hoo. team here at XO. <laughs> Best team on the planet. They serve churches and individuals, and uh, they're awesome. So They're amazing. Go to exomarriage.com, and you can see all the great stuff this ministry is doing. We love and appreciate you guys. We'll see you next time. <laughs>